It is six o'clock, so we will go ahead and call the Livingston County Board of Commissioners regular board meeting to order. Um, I'd like to start by wishing everyone a happy new year and welcoming the new commissioners. Um, we do have people who attend via Zoom, so we ask that when you do speak, that you speak into the microphone so that people out in Zoom land can hear you as well, please. Um, please join me in a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. And then if you will stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Helzerman. Uh, present. Commissioner Domus. Here. Commissioner Sample. Here. Commissioner Nakagiri. Here. Commissioner Dreck. Here. Commissioner Deaton. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Fiani. Here. And Commissioner Gross. Here. We do have a quorum. We do not have any correspondence this evening, so we will move to the first call to the public. As you came in through the, the doorway, there were cards, and if you're in the boardroom and would like to speak, we ask that you fill out a card and hand it in. And our first um, person this evening at the call to the public will be Randy Clawson, and it is a three-minute call to the public. I'm, as you said, Randy Clausen, and I am a constituent of Jay Drick, and I live in Howell, Michigan. I just wanted to be here the first night the new people came so that we could meet them, and I want you to know that we are all in this together, and it is my heartfelt hope that we'll make Livingston County a better place to be for all people. There are many people in Livingston County who are above the median, they're doing very well, but our county, sad as it is, such a wealthy county, still has 24% of the households below the level, they call it the Alice level, below the level of being able to make ends meet. And those people are not just a statistic 24, but they're people people. Now, I know that when I suffered uh, poverty or, or be not able to make ends meet, I was really glad for um, the people who came alongside of me and helped with the kinds of services that the government has the ability to provide. And one of the things that I'm really passionate about is that these 24 percent of the households would have some public transportation available to them so that they can get to and from work and so that they can use some of their money instead of trying to keep an old car running they can use the public transportation and use some of that money for their family's needs so you'll hear me often say that we need a better bus system for the people in Livingston County. And knowing that I see a lot of gray hair on the <laughs> commissioners and, and they're, we're all getting older and there's uh, expected a huge increase in the people over 65. And with that comes needs for public transportation because most people cannot afford to have a car that will take them in their wheelchair here and there. So it becomes even more important as we all age to have that kind of public transportation available. So as we work together to make this a better place, I hope that you will give serious thought to the transportation issues that will come before you this year. And I wish you all a happy new year. Next, we have Stacy Farrell from Osceola Township.
I'm here to talk tonight about leadership and the mission of this organization. Among the words contained within our county's mission statement are effective, efficient, and improve the quality of life for all who work, live, and play in Livingston County. This should be at the forefront of every action and decision by this board, and these should unequivocally be values that are exemplified by the chairperson, as well as characteristics such as integrity, teamwork, honesty, and the desire to maintain a healthy work culture. What I have witnessed in the last year is a departure from these values that are foundational to our community. Not only has there been attempts to subvert the systems in place to affect the appointments of myself and others, information has been misrepresented in an effort to manipulate others. This mishandling of information is evidenced through presentations on social vulnerability, COVID funding, health department issues, schools, and more. And they fail to provide information in a complete and responsible manner that allows fellow members to make an informed decision. That in itself should be a warning for all of you to do your own work. This micromanagement shows a disrespect to the county employees whose job it is to execute these systems under the guidance of the board and not for any member to force their individual will upon departments. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge proponent of leadership challenging the status quo in order to bring about positive change. But what I have seen is that this behavior has created an adversarial environment that attempts to pit county employees against the public in a sort of McCarthyism that breeds dissension, distrust, and acrimony. And that is not leadership. Healthy leadership respects the views of all constituents, liberal and conservative alike, knowing that their, their job is representation of everyone in their district, not just those that hold a certain viewpoint. A true leader abstains from the dramatics to focus on the overall success of the organization. This includes allowing the systems to work as they were designed and trusting the employees and the people actually doing the work while appropriately using authority in a curious but non-judgmental way so that employees feel coached and supported in their careers and constituents feel represented and that their tax dollars are being used appropriately. To me, it also means having the difficult discussions with those that you disagree with in order to listen, learn, and expand your worldview rather than making mass generalizations about your neighbors and colleagues. This delicate balance isn't a skill that folks are born with, but a result of the intentional and deliberate effort on behalf of the leader to develop the grace and understanding that leads all stakeholders wanting a seat at the table to collaborate in the progress of our county for the benefit of all. It's for that reason and others I have mentioned that I'm asking this board to usher in new leadership, one that honors the mission of the county seconds. as well as the residents. Thank you. Mr. Mike Murphy from Cohocta Township. Thank you and welcome new members. Nice to see you on uh, that side of the table. I just want to address two things. I'd like to address the uh, inflationary uh, payment that was voted on last time, as well as the stipend for the clerk. Um, <clears throat> I realize that this is a new board with some new members, um, but I don't think there was anything that was done maliciously or wrong with the previous board. And I would uh, trust that if this comes up for a vote again tonight, you would reaffirm what was passed by the previous board. However, if you decide that uh, you don't want to, or you have some uh, additional thoughts, let me just uh, plant a few seeds. Number one, um, in the interest of full disclosure, Betsy and I are friends outside of our, our professional relationship. Uh, but more importantly, she runs a great office. We were not on the front page for any election debacle uh, that happened. Um, that's a testament to her leadership. Um, she has done an extra or her and her office has done an extraordinarily good job of assisting and training the local clerks and making sure that their elections weren't a debacle. Um, you probably don't remember this, but in 2017, when she went from appointed to officially elected, she actually took a pay cut um, at that time. Um, you <clears throat> also heard from a number of clerks that uh, came in in um, gave testimony for lack of better words on her behalf of the increased workload that this is gonna create on not just her office, but all the uh, clerk's offices in the county. And this was something that just didn't happen organically. This was not just growth in the normal growth of business. Uh, this was due to a constitutional amendment that, that was passed by the people. There was no just, okay, the workload has increased organically because, right? So has mine, so has everybody else's on the board. Um, 
as a result of that change, again, it, it's a significant uh, workload. Uh, another thing that I want you to think about, in addition to the fact that she took a pay cut in 2017, um, if the stipend is not upheld, her deputy will actually make more money than she does. Uh, to me, when your right-hand man, right-hand woman uh, makes more than you do, that's just a little bit wrong. Maybe in the private sector, the head dude's got some stock options and all that stuff. That's not the case here. So um, I, I just, uh, again, I would support what the previous board did and would ask that you uh, reaffirm that if it's even brought back tonight. And regarding to the, uh, the inflationary uh, assistance, about 15 years ago, I was on a board where we gave the employees a raise. And due to a uh, perfect storm, nobody's fault, uh, we ended up about mid-year having to rescind that raise. That is still talked about today. That is still talked about today. Uh, that will leave a scar that will outlive all of your uh, time on this board uh, and maybe even in this county. So again, if that me. comes up for consideration, I would hope you would reaffirm um, the previous vote. Thank you. I don't have any more cards, so we will move to Zoom and Sherry LaRue, if you could please provide your name and your location, please. Hi, is my microphone working? Yes, it is. Thank you. Sherry LaRue, Green Oak Township. Welcome to the new folks on the board. Today, I want to share with you simply Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The king of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Thank you for this time. Thank you. Brenda Plank, if you would please um, introduce yourself and give your um, location, please. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, tonight, the Brenda, it's, it's very difficult to hear you. We're having a hard time hearing you. Oh, can you hear me now okay? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, uh, so I'm Brenda Plank from Green Oak Township. Uh, I just want to say good evening to the commissioners. Uh, tonight, the vote to elect the chair and vice chair will impact you, the county employees, and the residents of our county. What makes a good leader? Good leaders possess self-awareness, garner credibility, focus on relationship building, have a bias for action, exhibit humility, stay authentic, present themselves as constant and consistent, become role models, and are fully present. My hope is that you thought through which commissioner could represent the board based on those qualities. The definition of a good leader does not include someone who is part of the good old boys club and a buddy. It does not include someone who has promised to further your political career. In other words, there should be no quid pro quo when it comes to electing the board chair. After my two years on the board, I had a front row seat under the previous leadership. I believe uh, the previous chair dedicated himself to the job and attended almost every meeting. 
He was engaged with departments, asking questions and trying to understand the needs and wants of those departments. And for that hard work, I was grateful. But please don't let the chair or any commissioner do your homework. I recommend that after you review data and information presented by a commissioner or the chair, you meet with department heads and affiliated board members for additional information. Do your due diligence and request information from both sides. Other than that, the previous chair is a great guy. I don't think his leadership style is what the board needs. We need someone who is willing to listen to both sides run the meetings, be fully present, and doesn't manipulate board rules. In my opinion, that person is Commissioner Gross. He is very humble and will bring sanity back to the board. As most of you know, I lost to Jay Gross in the August primary, and when I called to congratulate him the next day, I said that if I had to lose to anyone, I was glad it was him since we both share most of the same values. My endorsement for Commissioner Gross as the chair should speak volumes to you based on my time on the board with Jay. I come before you without a personal agenda. All I want is leadership that is best for the county residents and what is best for the hardworking and dedicated county employees. You need a chairman who recognizes that you are his equal. And I think that person is Jay Gross. Please request seconds. secret ballots and don't share who you voted for. To, this will help you in your relationships. Thank you for your time and good luck. Thank you. Um, Janine Ayer, if you could provide your name and location, please. Uh, Janine Ayer, I live in Green Oak Township. Um, good evening, commissioners. And I'm just um, commenting um, just to say um, thank you for sitting where you are. Some of you are retired and uh, you could be uh, doing other things in your retirement. Some of you are um, still working and you have a very rigorous job. Some of you are business owners, but yet you're here sitting uh, to provide leadership for our county. And so I would like to thank each of you for doing that. It's no small thing to be a commissioner, to run for office and to do your job with excellence. So my only comment is thank you. And um, I just, my prayers will be with you throughout these next two years for wisdom and strength in these difficult times. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Alyssa, if you could provide your full name and um, city or township of residence. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to be very quick and follow up uh, in line with what Janine said. Happy New Year to everyone. Welcome aboard, new commissioners. Um, very nice to see you there. And um, good luck at all of this. I look forward to um, seeing what everyone has to bring to the table this year. Thank you so much and have a good evening. I see no more um, hands raised on Zoom. So we will go ahead and close the first call to the public. There is a second call to the public that will take place later in the um, meeting. So we'll move on to approval of the minutes. We do have the meeting minutes that are dated December 27th, 2022. Um, Motion Smith, support grows. Are there any additions, subtractions, or changes to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. <clears throat> any opposed indicate by saying nay. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. There are no tabled items from previous meetings, so we will move on to approval of the agenda. Approve the agenda, Halterman. Support Smith. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Direct. I would like to add an 11D and 11E as 
motions to postpone resolutions 2022-12-202, and the 202 is the important number, and 2022-12-203 that were uh, in the agenda of December 27, 2022, on the basis that they were premature. Are, are you at, uh, Madam Chair? Are, are you... just, just a moment. I just want to understand you're asking to add a motion to postpone. I believe that was what you stated is you want to, as item numbers 11D and E, a motion to postpone. Um, 2022, 12, 202, and 203. 11D would be 202, and 11E would be 203 for discussion purposes. Madam Chair, or I have a question. Uh, are you, Commissioner Helserman. Pardon? Yes, Commissioner uh, Helserman. Isn't the more correct thing to do is to ask for reconsideration? I'm going to defer to legal counsel on this. That I'm not, I'm not, I will defer to legal counsel. So Commissioner Drake, if this would be acceptable <laughs> to you, I would suggest that we take your proposed amendment to the agenda and just make it a light item 11D discussion on those two resolutions. And then if you wanna make a motion to postpone at that point in the agenda uh, or to reconsider or rescind or any of those things that can be done at that item in the agenda which I would suggest 11D discussion regarding the resolutions that you referenced. So we'll go on the agenda. Agreed. So for clarification, that's a motion for discussion of these. 2022-12-202 um, will be 11D. Sorry, I'm doing multiple things here and I wanna make sure to get these listed correctly. And 203 will be item 11E. That's fine to have those separated like that, yes. Okay. That's accurate. Okay, so we do have a motion to make that change. Is there a second? Madam Chair, I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Deaton. So we do have a motion and support. Is there any discussion on this amendment to the agenda? Commissioner Helserman? Uh, yes, I, I will not be voting in favor of putting this on the agenda tonight. Um, I think I voted in favor of both of these. Um, last time I would be voting again in favor of them. Uh, in my mind, uh, the people who voted on this had um, full authority to do so. Um, and I, I, although I think the people on this board may have a different opinion, they may do, yeah, we may do uh, what the majority wishes, but uh, I will not be supporting uh, this amendment to the budget. <clears throat> Commissioner Gross. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, I, I too voted uh, in favor of these two resolutions last month. Um, and I'm in favor of a reconsideration uh, for several reasons. First of all, with respect to the question of the stipend, um, I feel that there is a very important need for a salary adjustment. And I think, um, I think that can be best done by uh, adjusting the, the pay scale as opposed to doing a, a stipend. Um, I, I'm convinced that there's a need uh, for on several bases uh, to make the adjustment and make it effective in, for 2023. Uh, which I can allude to when we get into discussion. Um, with respect to the second uh, uh, item, 
Um, I voted in favor of it, although I did have concerns with respect to the timing. And uh, I, I voiced uh, that concern at the time uh, when we took the vote. And uh, I would like to be able to have some further discussion on that item as well. So I, um, I would be supporting the, uh, the motions to reconsider and looking forward to having discussion on both items. Thank you. Any further discussion? I think I'll just go ahead and roll call this. Um, Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. No. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. No. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. And Commissioner Nakagiri. Um, I have a quick, can I ask a question here? Can I, can I get the uh, the clerk to state what, what, the mo what we're actually voting on? It's a motion to add um, discussion of resolution 2022-12, 202, and 203 as items 11D and 11E. As discussion items? Correct. Uh, I'll vote yes. Motion carries. So I will be looking for an amendment to, or excuse me, a motion to adopt the amended agenda. So move gross. Second trick. Is there any discussion? Is seeing none, all of those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed indicate by saying nay. Motion carries. Are there any commissioners that have reports this evening? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the reports and we will move on to the business at hand, the resolutions for consideration. Um, the first resolution this evening is 2020. 3-01-001, um, election of the board chair for 2023. I think the resolution in front of you has done a great job of setting out the procedure that's going to be followed. Um, so at this point in time, I will open up the floor for nominations for chair for the Livingston County Board of Commissioners for 2023. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Dreck. Can I, is this appropriate time to ask for a secret ballot? If it is, then that I'd ask for the secret ballot. You know what, let's take nominations first and then we'll go ahead and, you know, if you would like to make that motion, I will certainly um, make that offer. Nothing. So, um, We'll go ahead and since nominations are open, are there any nominations for board chair? Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Helzerman. I uh, nominate Les Nakagiri. Are there any other nominations? Commissioner Sample. I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Domus. Okay, Commissioner Sample nominates Commissioner Domus. Are there any other nominations? Commissioner Smith. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to nominate Jay Gross. Okay, are there any other nominations? Are there any, I'll ask one more time, are there any other nominations? Seeing none, we'll close nominations. And at this time, Commissioner Dreck, if you would like to make your motion, um, go ahead and um, if you would please just give me the wording that you would like to make the motion. Commissioner Dreck moves for a secret ballot for the election of the board chair. Support. Uh, is, uh, I have a point of order. Is that, is that a vote or is, uh, is any request? Requires a majority vote. Okay. 
Yep, hold on. I'm just sitting here writing. I want to make sure I have this. It does, and it, you will see it, it takes a majority vote um, for this to move to a secret ballot. Just for people who are here or who may be attending, there is only one Michigan law that allows um, a secret ballot for uh, the position of chair person for the Board of Commissioners. That's Michigan Compiled Law 46.3a. Um, it cannot be used for election of the vice chair, strictly for the chair. So we do have a motion in support. Is there any discussion on um, the motion for a secret ballot for board chair? Seeing no discussion, all of those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please indicate by saying nay. Nay. We have eight yeas, yes, and one no, motion carries. So we will use a secret ballot. Um, at this point in time, um, Amy, if you would like to, we will distribute the ballots. The three um, candidates that have been nominated is R. Wes Nakagiri, Dave Domas, and Jay Gross. So if you would just complete your ballot, fold it in half, um, We'll be back around to collect those uh, in, in just a moment, so. <laughs> just for clarification to people that are in the boardroom or you know attending via zoom a candidate must receive five votes in order to be um, elected as the board chair so I feel like I should have Joe come up here and assist with the tally. You can't afford him. <laughs> He's wearing gloves. Okay, we have um, Commissioner Nakagiri received two votes, Commissioner Gross received two votes, and Commissioner Domus received five votes. So I would like to congratulate Commissioner Domus on his appointment as chair of the Board of Commissioners for 2023. And I will hand this meeting over to you, my friend. <laughs> I don't know whether I like that last <laughs> Good to be back, and uh, and quite honestly, I think any one of the people who were nominated would would serve just as well. I look forward to working with everyone on this board, and uh, I hope that I can learn an awful lot from them. I'm sure I will. This board has some unique uh, talent. We have young men from. When I say young men, you know, if you're under 70, in my book, you're young. But uh, uh, we've had 
We have people here who have been self-employed. People have come from different uh, areas in government, federal government, as well as local governments. And uh, uh, we have, uh, as I say, self-employed people and uh, a couple of uh, numbers guys that I think are really sharp, former commissioner on the Brighton um, uh, Board of Education, who, is, uh, who brought them out of debt I don't want to make a speech for you, but if you'd care to give me the numbers, I'd be glad and let them out. A little over eight point five million dollars on a fifty million dollar annual budget. That's incredible. The deficit was eight point five million. Dollars. Yeah, it's incredible. And the school is still running. Would you believe that they didn't fail, and they're probably teaching very, very well. And uh, um, Frank Sample, who is the gentleman next to him, is a currently a contractor in, in Livingston County, has uh, earned his living with his family uh, in the construction business, currently doing a huge project. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'll have people lining up here want to hire you. So, but he's an outstanding gentleman and he's a family man and uh, we're proud to have him. Uh, the third gentleman uh, that uh, let him introduce himself, quite frankly, but he is a gentleman from other areas in government and Roger Deaton is uh, an outstanding uh, contribution to this board. And uh, he's been an outstanding contribution to the veterans in this community. He's a veteran himself. And uh, we're proud to have him. And he's uh, looking for, we're looking for great things from you, Roger. So, Thank you, along with all of the other five members of the board, I'm pleased to be here. And I look forward to a, a great two years. So thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Excuse the interruption. I just would like to take one final formality to confirm this process for you. Did I which, accept the nomination? No, nope, not that. But we we did a motion for a secret ballot. We know the results of the motion. Now I would offer that it would be in order to approve the resolution uh, confirming that you are the board chair for 2023, which is in the agenda packet there at 001. All right. So will anybody... Uh, how, well, how do we handle that? Do you just want us to approve it? Do I? We just I, need a motion and support. All right. So I, I move that we uh, accept the ballot. All right. Thank you. Support as given. And we'll take it with all those in favor. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. <clears throat> well, we have a new chair. I guess that's we're official. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think at this point it's appropriate to destroy the ballots. Excuse me, I'm going to defer to legal counsel. I do not believe we destroy those. We, we keep those on record, correct? Could you provide guidance? The board could motion to. There's no legal requirement that we do. Generally, if there's a question about whether or not somebody voted a certain way, it's a best practice so that it can be verified. But there's no legal requirement that we preserve them. And since we've just affirmed the resolution by a majority vote, frankly, um, he is the chair, regardless of what those ballots say. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, destroy the ballots. Or All those in favor signify by saying aye. I'm sorry, but who who was the second on that? Okay, right. so we have a, a move by Commissioner Helzerman, Commissioner Deaton second. Okay, thank you. Uh, New voices to get used to, I apologize. I nominate... Uh, okay. We need a... Well, you need a vote? Yeah. All right. We have a motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye, aye. All those opposed. The next item on the agenda is the election of a board vice chair. Uh, I, I, I choose to nominate uh, Jay Drick to be the vice chair of the, this commission. Second. Are there any... Are there any nominations? All right, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Welcome aboard, Jay. Thank now you. it's now it's both of us. I'm not alone. See, I feel so much safer. So I'm sorry to interrupt again. <laughs> All but, right. So we only had one nomination. We just had a, a vote, but I just want to make sure that we're approving the resolution with Commissioner Drick as vice chair because we missed the motion on... Uh, following the nomination. So if a motion would be in order to approve Commissioner Drick um, as the voice chair per resolution 
Anybody else? So moved. All right, thank you. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? I'll get the hang of this sooner okay. or later, Councillor. No problem. <laughs> Now we have a resolution 2023-01-003, a resolution adopting the rules of the Livingston County Board of Commissioners and to establish meeting dates for the year 2023. Uh, move the resolution, Halsherman. Moved by Commissioner Halsherman. Anybody? Smith. And supported by Commissioner Smith. Anybody have any comments and concerns about the, the calendar? or any of the rules? Uh, I have a, a series of amendments that I'd like to discuss if this is the appropriate time. Certainly. Okay, uh, first one I believe is on page 18 of our agenda. I'll go there. Uh, it's uh, under... <coughs> Uh, B, order of business agenda. Uh, I move that we change the agenda template by moving the approval of the agenda from uh, item, I believe that's uh, I to E and move all the other items down as shown here. I believe that that's uh, a clearer way. It's better to have the agenda early in the meeting. You want to move the agenda to a different place in the agenda? Yes, exactly. You want to move the board rules? No. All right. Is that a is that a motion? That's a motion. Does he have his support? Support, girls. Any questions or discussions? <coughs> Nobody. All those in favor of the motion to move the agenda to a different um place on the agenda please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed uh, uh mr chair i have another amendment if i could please sir uh, i move uh this is on page 14 um, of our work page 14 down at the bottom under committees uh, uh, article 4 section a standing committees uh, I, I move the following that the I move that the finance asset asset management committee will be a committee of the whole uh, with a quorum of only four uh, I I believe that the finance committee um, needs to be expanded to be a committee of the whole. Anybody support that? Let me just comment. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Nagagari. I'll support it. Okay. How about any discussion? Uh, I'd like to talk about it. Sure. I, uh, we used to have uh, the the finance committee used to be a committee of the whole, and uh, it was a kind of a self standing committee, uh, and we met Wednesday mornings at seven thirty, and each individual committee would pass whatever they did. The finance committee would take every resolution from from these committees and give it a second approval before, uh, before we came uh, to, to the whole. So everybody, not just the committee would have a, a full discussion, everybody would have a full discussion at the finance committee. And I just think that, uh, that the amount of information uh, that is handled by the finance committee is something that, uh, the full board should have access to speak on uh, at least twice at the committee level and uh, at the full board level. 
And so that is, and, and as far as four or five, it makes no difference to me. I, I just think that uh, four would make it kind of like, like the other committees uh, uh, that we only have four. I don't know, maybe we'll have five on the committees, but that's the reason why I put that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? Commissioner Nakazuri? I have a question for legal counsel on the, um, on the, the doing what the resolution wants. It's, um, I'll say, different than I'm used to. Is that uh, past legal muster? So it will. The board can establish a lower quorum requirement. Quorum is actually not legally defined, believe it or not. But the thing that is required is that the final passage, so anything that is completed by the board has to be done by a majority of those elected and serving. So as long as all items considered by the finance committee are forwarded on to the full board of commissioners for final passage, which will have a quorum of five, and then also have the five vote requirement with a board composed of nine, you can have a reduced quorum requirement for your committee. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Joe Gross. Yes, sir. Um, I, uh, as Commissioner Helsman has indicated, I would uh, uh, support increasing the membership of the Finance Committee from four to the full nine commissioners. And I would uh, further uh, suggest that instead of just having four uh, as a quorum for voting purposes, that it should be a minimum of five to alleviate the necessity of having somebody break a tie. Um, and so I, I favor nine, but I'd like to go to five in terms of voting. Commissioner Smith, did you have your hand up? No, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Gross handled my concern. The, uh, originally the finance committee was a committee of the whole as well. And the, the purpose of making, giving it that authority was because everything that went through finance touched all of the other areas in government, whether it was personnel, whether it was animal control or uh, uh, public service or the sheriff's department or whatever, everything went through finance. And so it was the last scrubbing before it came to the board. Now, there's no reason why anybody couldn't attend the meeting of one of these other committees and their public safety, uh, general government and uh, personnel. There are four members in each of those as, as it is now. And, and by the time they leave that committee and go to finance and then go on to the board, it looks as though the people who were here long before us saw some wisdom in that. And uh, I would propose that we restore the board or the finance committee to a membership of nine, the committees that have four members on them. If there's a tie, the vote is a no. And if there's, if the chairman is in the audience, he can break a tie. So I think we still cover those bases pretty well. So would you accept a change? Yes, sir. Um, I don't know if any of the other commissioners have a comment. I've already spoken uh, once. So if there's anybody else that has no, something, okay. I, I would yield to them uh, before I make my second comment. Go right ahead, Commissioner. Um, I, uh, one reason I wanted to uh, increase the size of the finance committee to a full board, nine members, is that um, for the past, year or so uh, there's been four members of the finance committee and uh, some of the commissioners who were not members of that committee chose to stay and observe what transpired and generally speaking any handouts were not provided to the commissioners um, in the audience seats uh, and I, I felt it was a bit of a disservice that uh, all the commissioners did not have access to the same information. So um, that's, I, if I had my druthers, I'd have 
all nine members of the finance committee voting, uh, but I'd be willing to settle for five uh, with the provision that any commissioners attending uh, to observe the meeting be uh, granted the opportunity to have access to the same information as the committee members. I think the issue with uh, information provided to other commissioners is an easy one to resolve. I think they should always receive everything that all of the other commissioners receive, whether they're on a committee or not. And uh, I've seen that happen in the past, it works pretty well. You can always throw it away if you don't want it, but for most people that get them, they read them and that's why they're here. So I would like to see nine, if you if you would concede that uh, commissioner. Nine, that's the committee of the whole. That's the committee of the whole. Yeah, that's exactly that's, right. That's what, that's what it means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, we don't have a time limit yet. I'm looking the, at you, Wes. <laughs> yeah, just um, for clarification, it's uh, we'll have a the finance committee will be a committee of nine, a committee of the whole, and it'll have a does it have a quorum requirement of four or five? It'll be five. five. Okay. You'll you'll have to. Uh, I'll I'll I'll, I'll uh, take that as a friendly amendment. I'll move it to five. Sure. Anybody else have any thoughts? Yes, Commissioner. So Commissioner Sam. Does that still mean the finance committee's resolution can still go in front of yet another full board? That's right. And you remember that committees <clears throat> and are, uh, are advisory. None of these committees that we have have the authority to make legislation or ordinances or rules. And that goes for the finance committee too. So a lot of times when the finance committee would deal with an issue, it, it, it involves other areas that some of these commissioners may not be uh, up to speed on. It's always an opportunity to learn something from it, that finance committee. And it gives us, I think, a thorough scrubbing of the issue before we ask nine other people who may not have had any opportunity along the way to vote on it. So, Commissioner Smith, you're nodding, is that? I always nod. Oh, you always nod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a bobblehead. Well, so. Are there any other comments? No, what exactly is the um, amendment that you want to say? Okay, uh, I move that the Finance Committee, uh, Finance Asset Management Committee, uh, will be a committee of the whole or the whole board with a quorum of five. That's my amended okay. um, amendment. So we will also we'll, we will have a personnel committee, public safety committee, general government committee. Those are all committees of four. They're advisory, and a finance committee, which has a membership of nine. Yes, sir. Um, I was assuming that we would address the finance committee separately, but. I would like to make a motion that there be five board members on each of the other committees as well. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair, take care of this one first. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we have to vote on the amendment. Finance first. All right. So, are there any other comments uh, on the issue of whether to make this finance committee a committee of the whole? Is there no other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And we have a committee of the whole for the finance committee. I, I, I have several others, but I will uh, pass to other commissioners and pick up the other ones later, give some other, other commissioners a chance to uh, amend as they wish. Commissioner Nakagari, did you have wanted to Yes, sir. Commissioner Drick. I'd like to uh, have the commission uh, consider that we scrap the words silent reflection and put in the word prayer and then have it optional that we have a schedule of who might bring in, who might either pray themselves as a commissioner for the rest of us or bring in a uh, 
another person to pray, pray for us that day. But I'd like to see it say moment of prayer. So I make that motion that we amend our agenda to moment of prayer. Support. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Who, who was it? Wes. Oh, I'm sorry. So we have a motion on the floor to change a moment of silence to a moment of prayer? Yes. A moment of prayer. It's been um, moved and supported. Okay. Is um, there any discussion? Mr. Chair, uh, I, I would like to, I think this is a broader discussion. Uh, and before we institute it, or as part of the institution of this, that we um, uh, refer it to a proper committee. I don't know whether it's a government committee to work out the details, because a lot of different places do this a lot of different ways. Uh, and I'd rather get it right the first time instead of get it wrong and have to change it or be forced to change it. Uh, so I'm favorable to it, but I'm favorable to, uh, to do it upon uh, it being um, given to a committee to, uh, to, to make sure that we get, have all our everything uh, done correctly before we institute it. Uh, An institution of this would be upon approval of the of the full board at, at that particular time. Because I, you know, I've thought about this. I've got a lot of uh, ideas, but I think that um, I don't know if we want to discuss it now. So you want another committee? No, no, just, just refer to the government committee. So the committee that would that would uh, that could dis discuss it, whichever committee you think is uh, the, the appropriate committee. Anybody else have any comments? Commissioner Gross. Well, I support uh, Commissioner Halzerman's uh, recommendation. I think um, the possibility of having a, uh, a moment of prayer at, at each board meeting um, we would need to have some discussion conversation regarding how we're going to manage this. Uh, uh, are we going to be worried about uh, religious affiliation? Uh, uh, you know, who, who would be designated as the person to author the prayer? Uh, could it be a commissioner? Or could it be Sheriff Murphy, perhaps? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think some aspects of the of the idea need to be discussed thoroughly and uh, so I would uh, I would support assigning this responsibility to most likely general government committee. Anybody else? Mr. Nakagori. Um, just a point of order. There's a motion um, to and support that um, if we're going to change course, um, we, we need to vote on we need to vote on the motion and the support that's on the floor right now. Or, yeah. or have the um, uh, the, the uh, commissioner Drick who offered the um, amendment to uh, withdraw. Commissioner Drick, do you want to handle that? I write you. I don't, I don't think see we have. I don't. I don't see that it's a, such a tough thing. All right. To do both even. I mean, Change it to prayer now, and then have the government committee how, how about look that? into it too. I was about to say we don't need another committee, but this sounds like a time to talk about one. And I can think of at least two people that ought to be on it, and uh, <laughs> well, and maybe three. I think Wes yeah. would. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think we need a separate committee. I think we need to give it to a committee. Get it, give it to the general government, the, an existing committee. Give it a, uh, because uh, you, know, you want to pick one? something. I would say general government. You know, okay, right. so can we change this? Uh, sure, let's let's send it there. To refer this matter to general brakes. government. We'll tap the brakes and go with that. Okay. All the, uh, am I, we got a motion on the floor? There's been a second. I've, I've, I've agreed to the friendly okay. amendment, so, so it'll also be sent. Do we understand what that, what that agreement finally is? There'll be a, yes. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other? I almost forgot where we are on the agenda. After. Oh, we're we're in the middle of, of three right now, aren't we? Or C. Right here, let me see. So I, yeah. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, we uh, recently concluded uh, defining the membership of the Finance Committee. I, at this point, would like to uh, make a motion that we uh, change the membership of the other three committees, personnel, general government, and public safety, from four commissioners to five commissioners. Support. Are there any other comments on it? You want to change the, the committee? Uh, Number to five in both in all three of those other committees. Is that it? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is that the last of it? No. No. I'm sorry, Commissioner Smith. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I would like to look at our calendar. Uh, each year, we we bump into year end issues of timing, including the approval of the annual budget, which I know we work diligently to move forward, but it, it always comes down to uh, a crunch. Uh, and with year end vacations becoming more and more prolific, I would suggest that we move the final uh, board of the season of the calendar year from December 26 to December 20th. I have, I have a Wednesday evening conflict. Could it be the 21st? I, that's a great alternative. Are there any other changes to the calendar? All those in favor of making that change in the calendar signify by saying aye. Mr. No? Chair, I didn't get a support on that. Oh, we don't have a support. I didn't hear what support. Is there a second I, on that uh, motion to amend the calendar? Is there any reason? Why well, we couldn't make it the 19th and just back them up? Mm. I, don't, I don't think we can really discuss this until there's a support anyway. I'll support. Gross. All those in favor of changing? Okay. Discussion. There's some people that wanted to talk about it. All right. We have a discussion. Anybody care to add something? Go ahead. Mr. Chair, I was wondering if it could uh, make it the 19th. It said uh, it wouldn't be breaking the week up so much that last week of the year. Is it possible to do that? The 18th and the 19th? Getting, you know, as I see the problem of having a, a meeting and then a meeting uh, is, uh, it, you know, our, I think our administrators should. Uh, Chime in on that, Mr. Chair, if that's okay with you. <clears throat> okay. Um, sure. So I was, I, I think this could be done. The, the issue with having back to back meetings is that we, we don't know what'll be on the 19th agenda because it'll be pending what happens on the 18th. Uh, we could still notice the meeting uh, in advance and then provide the agenda the night of. But if you'd like to get the agenda sooner than, it, it just, it's, it's tough because we can't produce an agenda until we know what came out of committee. Um, so if we had a couple of days, that's easier, but I think it could be done the next day as long as we were able to notice the meeting in advance. And that, is that correct, Matt? We're not required to publish an agenda. That's right. There's no agenda re requirement under yeah. the OMA. It's just an operational consideration. Yeah. So, so as long as, you know, you understood that you weren't going to have an agenda till that night, 
then it could be done uh, logistically from from our office. The, the other possibility is make the 18th meeting a, a committee of the whole and take care of it on take care of everything on the 18th. I don't know. That's you know that we. Mr. Pan. It was a committee of the whole meeting, though. Any resolution that was passed, I don't think would be official or formal, or formally approved by the board in that regard. Or, is that what, correct? I'm just seeking clarification. Well, what that... we used to do is when we had a finance meeting, we would have we would we would have a um, a full board meeting right afterwards. So we'd post both of them for the same day. And then uh, with a consent agenda, we could just do a consent agenda instead of bringing it all up. It seems to me if you're gonna have, if you're gonna go to the 19th, it seems to me that you should have it on the 18th and just handle it the same night. If we, we can always, if, if things get hairy, then we can change it. You know, because we had the same situation this year and we went back and forth and whatever we need to do, we can do. So. Mr. Gross. Um, I, I would support uh, moving up the uh, final meeting of the year to sometime earlier. Uh, but from a slightly uh, different approach. Um, within the last several months, I've uh, been in contact with folks who have expressed a concern about us not having a budget until almost the end of December. And there's, there's been an expression of concern on that, that if there was some way we could expedite the budget process and, and get that finalized and put to bed, and we wouldn't have to worry about it in the last week of December. Uh, so that's just uh, a bit of information that may be relevant. Thank you. Good point. When are we legally required to, to post a budget? We have to have it adopted by New Year's Eve, by the end of, end of the year, December 31st, by law. Um, our target for this calendar would be to have you voting on a budget on November 27th. So if something falls through, if something goes haywire last minute, then we have those meetings in December. But this year, the budget was approved November 28th. We usually like to target that last meeting in November to pass the budget. And then that gives us the month behind if there, or a month, you know, yet in December if there are issues. But typically, we, we target that second meeting in November. Well, that's kind of like Christmas week, I mean. What could possibly go wrong <laughs> if we make it in the same year? Is there any reason why we have to wait until December? Is there, is there anything? Well, again, we're, we're targeted. We're, I'm going to give a budget recommendation to the Finance Committee on October 23rd per our normal um, course of events. And then in the following month, it would go to you all for discussion and, and, uh, and then again, a vote on the 27th. So we're not targeting December. But if you're, but we need to have a fallback plan in case it doesn't get adopted in, in, in November. We're, our target is November. The budget process is gonna start in April and we're gonna have a revenue forecasting committee that meets in early May. And that's how long it takes us to get to an adopted budget. And so there's not a ton of wiggle room because part of that is revenue estimates. And if you do those really, really far in advance, then you're gonna have to come back and redo them anyway. And so we feel pretty comfortable with our process. And again, our target is always to be done with it in November. And it was this year. And I think it was two years ago as well. Do we always come back uh, for budget adjustments? Oh, sure. Pretty yeah. much. So oh, uh, yeah. what's new? Yeah, budget amendments happen quarterly or as needed. Yeah. So is there any reason why we couldn't start in March? Well, the reason is that the, it's harder to forecast revenue for a full year out the earlier in the previous year that you start it. So that, that would be a, a little bit of a challenge because the whole budget is built around those revenue estimates and waiting until early May gets a little bit closer to the time that we're, we're targeting and we're focusing for. Um, if the board, we, we bring a resolution to the board every year that adopts a budget calendar. Um, 
And so we, we follow that resolution for how we do it. Um, I, I, I mean, I would ask our CFO if she has concerns about March, but my concerns will be focused largely on revenue estimates. Um, my biggest concern is our pension. We don't get our pension number until the end of June, and we also don't get our health care number until right around June or July. And those are major expenses for the county. So we should leave it until, well, I guess we'll just leave it till we have to deal with it in, in amendments, I suppose. We'll start it in April like we always have. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, one other possibility with respect to the schedule for the budget is that uh, this past summer, due to uh, several constraints, we, we managed to compress the budget reviews, uh, marathon sessions, a uh, uh, number of days. And while that is a, the most desirable, uh, obviously, uh, but it's something we could do so that maybe even starting with the regular schedule that you and Cindy have identified, uh, when it gets up to the point of budget reviews, maybe we could compress that to bring in the back end, so to speak. And we, we could look at that. Yeah, we're, we would be open to any process that doesn't mess up the budget. <laughs> and, and I just, I don't, it, it's difficult to do it, you know, 11 or 10 months in advance. So, so it's going to play out through the year organically because of when we get certain financial information. But if there's a way to structure the level two presentations differently, we're open to that. Um, and really, I mean, certainly this is a topic that'll go to the finance committee for, for discussion uh, before the calendar is adopted. But there, there is a reason why it's, it's set up the way it is now. It's not you know, that we, we, there's rationale to it. Thank you. Could, could we have the motion read, please, as it is? Commissioner, Commissioner Smith made a motion to move the December 26th meeting to December 21st. And Commissioner Gross is the second on that. Problems with that? Anybody have a problem with, with doing that? Can we? All right. So, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? There we go. Are there any other changes to the uh, calendar? Any changes to the uh, rules? I have a couple more here. At least one uh, at the very end of the rules, uh, it talks about the latest edition. I believe it's on page, I have page 15, but somehow that doesn't sound right. Um, it's page 28 of, or 26 of, of uh, the agenda. It's the last page of the, the board rules. Um, uh, right at the top, um, C, it says, the latest edition of Robert's Rule of Order shall apply when the board rules uh, uh, are not, uh, not, do not address an issue and uh, I looked it up and the latest edition is the 12th edition. Uh, if that is correct, I move uh, that, that in article uh, eight, section C, the word latest edition should be replaced by the 12th edition. Is that a motion? I so moved, yes. Anybody support that? If we call it the last edition, right. is it necessary to give it a birth date? I don't know. I think we could probably get along without that. Okay. Although then. it's a good thought. Okay, uh, then I have one more. That uh, I, you, you mean, all right, go ahead. Because nothing, nobody seconded. Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Can, can I ask if that's a formal withdrawal of your motion? Yeah, I withdraw, I withdraw okay. the motion uh, due to lack of a second. Uh, and my, I believe this will be my final uh, one. Um, 
And this is uh, in regard to Article 5, I believe it's on page 17. Oh, yeah, committee appointments. This is an add on here to F. Uh, and I would uh, ask that um, I move that the following amendment be considered uh, to move to add uh, paragraph two, as it's shown on the piece of paper that I have that I gave to the clerk. Uh, any elected and serving, this is my motion. I move that any elected that we add this to uh, to that uh, article four uh, uh, section about committees, and that we add this wording under section uh, under paragraph two. Any elected and serving commissioner may sit in a limited ex officio position, uh, different from the chairman's power on any committee. They may uh, they must sit at the dais. They have full rights. Uh, of a, uh, full rights of the of a, co a sitting commissioner, with the exception of making motions, supporting or voting. So that means they would be sitting up here. They could. The they could they if they to. chose. They could. The, the reason that I'm doing it is that any commissioner can sit on any committee and be part of the discussion, uh, but not vote. Uh, again, uh, there are times when we as commissioners are sitting uh, in the audience of a committee and we have a particular question and we can't address it until the final decision. Um, I, I think that that would take care of it. Uh, we used to have, uh, with the finance committee considering everything, we used to have that without uh, asking questions at uh, the first committee level. So anyways, that's... So people who are commissioners who are not members of that committee could participate in voting? No, not voting. Not voting. In they can't make motions, they can't second, they cannot vote, but they can be part of the discussion. They can be officially a part of the discussion, but with no power to vote. Because, uh... yes, sir, Commissioner. I, I greatly apologize for interrupting, but no. and perhaps I missed it. But I don't believe there was a second. Right. Yeah. And so I don't think we're permitted to discuss. Sure. This okay. Yeah. Good point. That's, yeah. The motion needs support. Uh, it was drawn. Okay. All right. Are there any other comments on this resolution? Or I'm sorry, on the motion? Commissioner Smith. Uh, Subparagraph three reads, in the event that the normally formed quorum for a committee is not that, that was not part of, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not, uh, it's number two. Okay. So I, I am not proposing that we, uh, that we, uh, I'm not proposing that in that we, uh, because we moved the committees to five, I don't think that that is necessary. Okay. okay. So if I can, for clarity, then you're looking at the handout you gave us is, is committee appointment number one and-, and The committee to number one only. is is the wording that's already there. Yep. And section two is the one that I, any elected and serving commissioner may sit in a limited ex officio position, different from the chairman's power on any committee, they must, to do this, they must sit at the dais. Uh, they have full rights of, of any commissioner, but they cannot, uh, with the exception of making motions, supporting, or voting. They, they have a full discussion privileges, but they're not voting. They have no voting rights. They can't make a motion. Uh, that, you know, they can't, you know. Thank you, and you're, and you're deleting subparagraph three then. Yeah, subparagraph three, uh, I am, because of, because we're making the committees larger, that is not necessary. Anyone else? 
Uh, the motion has been made and supported. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? 9 0. Now we're ready to vote on the rules. Yeah. We, have to, we, have to, we have to vote on this motion unless there's more. Unless there's more. Are there any other changes made to the rules, Commissioner, Commissioner Gross? Uh, yes, on the uh, um, original agenda, page eight of 19, that shows the, uh, the areas of responsibility for the respective committees. Um, under item three, general government human services committee. Um, I subject to correction or whatever, I, I would like to propose that we add the council on Livingston County uh, Council on Aging to that committee. Um, I'm not sure it's necessarily a subcommittee of the human services collaborative body. It's my understanding that the council on aging was a, set up and approved by the board of commissioners. And so if that being the case, I, I think that should be identified as being the responsibility of the general government, health and services, health and human services committee. And then under uh, the next page under courts, public safety and infrastructure, uh, that- Excuse me, uh, you're going a little too fast for me. So if you could- Okay. Slow down, yes. what was your change? I wanted to add council, the Livingston County Council of Aging as another responsibility under general government. Okay. And we should have uh, uh, at least one, if not two commissioners appointed to that, to that group. It's been past practice. Right. And then the second, the second change uh, is under the Courts Public Safety and Infrastructure Development Committee. Um, our planning department is included under that umbrella. And the planning department has a co responsibility for the uh, Parks and Open Space Committee. And so I think that should be identified as being under, under the umbrella of uh, public safety as a separate item. And again, that was a, a, a subcommittee that was um, appointed uh, and approved by the Board of Commissioners in the past. So you wanted to add Parks and Recreation Committee to yep. Open Space Parks Rec. Yep. I, I support those changes. Are there any other changes? Yes, sir. I'll have one more, but I just okay. didn't take care of these first. Okay. Ready? Ready for a vote? Yes, Dr. Yes, Mr. Gross has one more. Well, is, is, is it in the same vein or is it in a different vein? Uh, the, the other change I have? Yeah. Well, it, it may not be a change on the on page. Uh, uh, page describing general duties of standing committees that follows the courts and public safety uh, layout. Uh, item one, two, three, four it says, uh, uh, standing committees will study and submit recommendations for adoption of county ordinances. Uh, in my almost three years on the board, I never heard of any discussion of county ordinances. I'm wondering, do we have a list or a book that identifies those? And, if they don't exist, I think we should delete that I statement. Think there are a couple of ordinances of them. There, there, there are some we hardly ever do. Uh, I refer to civil council. Do you tell us which they are? Yes, you do. I believe you do have some. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. The county does have very limited ordinance power prescribed by law. So even though you may not have one currently in place, there are a few that you could consider in the event you wanted it to come up. And, and I can produce um, maybe a memo regarding what those are, if you'd like to have that, and maybe also work with administration to see if we can locate what are currently in place here in Livingston County. That would be satisfactory. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so I second the first two. Support the first two. <clears throat> are there any other comments or questions? Anything else? 
All those in favor? So what exactly are we adding to each part of this? If I may. Um, as a subset, if you will, of the um, human services and collaborative body, which is the last item under general government. Yep. Um, there's a Livingston County Council on Aging, and we have had commissioners appointed to that body. Uh, and I think they should be identified as a separate entity. And likewise with the Parks and Open Space Recreation Committee, um, that's been a subset, if you will, of the planning department. The folks in the planning department generally uh, find funding and, and come up with uh, uh, things to do in the parks. We have two major parks, Lutz and Fillmore, and uh, that group has been working very diligently on that. I think uh, that also was created by a vote of the Board of Commissioners in the past, and I feel it should be given some recognition in terms of responsibility under the Public Safety Committee. These uh, uh, lists on these two pages are what each committee can do. They can't take somebody else, other committee's responsibilities. They can only deal with the responsibilities here. And they have to be listed in order for the committee to take it up. So, so there was a couple of things that were not on the list that Commissioner Gross thinks are important to be on there. Okay. Commissioner Nagaguri. I have a question for Commissioner Gross. Uh, if with the changes being proposed, I was, I was desirous of understanding the rationale of, of why the change and uh, what would happen if we just left it this, you know, if we didn't make the change and just left the committee's structure this, the way it is as listed in the uh, rules currently. It's been my understanding, if I may, it's been my understanding that um, some of the folks who are participants in these respective groups, uh, particularly Council on Aging, uh, at times feel they, they don't get the recognition of what they are trying to accomplish on behalf of our aging community, and that um, they don't necessarily have full backing of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, that, that same theory applies to the Parks and Open Space Committee. Uh, both, both entities were established by the board, but it's like they're hidden in the closet someplace. Um, and uh, both entities feel that it would be appropriate that the county board give due recognition to what they are working diligently to accomplish. Yes, Commissioner Sample. I motion to close discussion. Okay. So we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the uh... point point of order, Mr. Chair. If yes, sir. A motion to close discussion is uh, a motion to co call the question. Call the question, which what requires two thirds okay. to, to so. cut off debate. I'm, so I don't, a, who, can I ask who seconded that motion? Who seconded the motion to close discussion? I can second. Thank you. So we, we can just call for a vote or we could also. Yeah, well, we have to vote to close the discussion. There's no more discussion. I think I can close the discussion, no, quite no. honestly. Well, no. Otherwise, we need a two thirds uh, vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Now we have to vote on the motion. Now we can vote on the motion. All right. Although you want to you, you just clearly say, tell us what the, what the motion is. No, this is the whole, this, this, this is the whole thing. This you is wanna, all of the, this is all of this. I got it, I got it. See right, yeah, we're, we've approved the motion. We've approved all the uh, 
Uh, all all no. those in Ms. favor? Mr. Chair, yes. I, I have the motion on the floor as being a motion by Commissioner Gross to add the Livingston County Council on Aging okay. to the General Government Committee and to add the parks and open space to the courts and public safety. Right. That's the motion I have on the floor. That's correct. So that is your motion and it's yes. been supported. Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next resolution, which is to approve the uh, amended board rules. Do I hear someone moving that? I, I have that motion moved by um, Commissioner Helzerman and supported by Commissioner Smith. It happened so long ago, you know, I'm having trouble. That's why, I, that's why I'm here taking right, minutes. <laughs> so there's a motion on the floor. It's been supported to approve the uh, rules changes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. We'll now move into closed session. We need it. We have a discussion. We have two discussions. Oh, I'm sorry. We have two other discussion items. Yeah. Mr. Grick, you want to introduce those two uh, discussion items? Thank you. The uh, particular wording I've written down for the secretary, but I'll read it for my uh, colleagues. J.R. Drick moves resolutions 2022-12-202 dated 12 27 be not implemented and not effective as hereby postponed, giving discretion to the board chair to replace on a future agenda. My reasoning and rationale is that we're going to have more requests for stipends or salary bumps in the future. <laughs> Commissioners, can I ask that you all speak into your microphone? We're having a very hard time hearing you on Zoom. My idea is that we're going to have future stipend requests and future salary bump requests, which is perfectly normal. But if we don't establish some criteria today or soon, we are being accused of just ad hoc deciding whether we like somebody or whether whether somebody's made some kind of case. I understand that one of the uh, sentences in the resolution that was passed on December 27 was elections are the backbone of democracy. My sense is the courts could come along and say courts are the backbone of democracy. Sheriff could come along and say public safety is the backbone of democracy. It's pretty loose. So I'd like to tap the brakes. I'm in favor of more money for the clerk, but I think it'd be smart to tap the brakes a little bit and set up some criteria for this kind of uh, resolution in the future. And the first one we then would take up would be the clerks. That's what I'm proposing and the reasoning. Commissioner Direct, will you Go be ahead. providing me a copy of that um, wording? Thank you. Very helpful. Point of order is well, everything I said is not here, but the no. good stuff is. Uh, it is not uh, the correct thing to do to have a vote to reconsider. Is that the, the correct? So you could do that, but the same threshold for reconsideration under your board rules is, is a majority of those elected and serving. So you have added this as a discussion item to your agenda. It is not out of order because it has not been implemented as far as the change. And uh, Commissioner Drick, if you'll allow me to answer a question you previously posed, there's not a blanket prohibition that says a former board can't bind a future board. What that means and it's nuanced is that if something has not occurred, the new board can take it up just like you're doing today and go in a different direction. So there's not a, a specific legal prohibition, but there is the opportunity if the majority so decides 
to make changes to things. That can be done through reconsideration. It can also be done by bringing the issue back to an agenda at a later date, which has been done here. Has there been a question directed at me now? Or uh, do we need a do we need a that? second to the motion? This is I believe you do have a second, do you not? No? I'll second the motion. What? All right. So the motion's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Commission Smith. Yeah, can I ask our county administrator to come forward and address the issue of uh, the stipend payment and if we have any other employees that receive a stipend and for what rate reason? Uh, yes, uh, several elected officials receive stipends for specific activities related uh, to their work. And I apologize, I didn't know this was um, going to be on the agenda, but the drain commissioner receives a stipend, uh, the treasurer receives a stipend. Um, there's one more I'm blanking on. Um, Register, Register of Deeds, I'm sorry, receives a stipend. So stipends are um, provided when there's some work uh, described and undertaken that uh, they do that would be um, warranting of additional pay. Um, so yeah, there are several that receive that. In your, in your experience, uh, given the change in legislature in Lansing and the uh, additional imposition on the county clerks, uh, would, would a stipend seem a reasonable way to compensate someone for unanticipated extra duties? And would it also not be included in their mirrors? So, um, yes, to the first question, I, I mean, I think a stipend's appropriate. It's obviously up to the board if it gets handled that way. One of the things that's uh, beneficial about a stipend is, again, we're, we're specifying a reason for it as opposed to just saying 7,500 for you. Um, because conversely to what was mentioned earlier, I would be more concerned about other elected officials saying, okay, now where's, where's my wage, where's my extra wages? And I would remind the board, we just went through a very long, extensive wage study that included the elected officials. The difference with this position, the clerk's office position, is that Prop 2 hadn't passed at the time that study had concluded. So those new responsibilities were, were not going to be considered at the time that that salary was being looked at. The other issue is that one of the uh, unintended consequences of that wage study was that the deputy clerk is now on a scale that will eventually supersede the pay of the clerk. And I don't think anybody thinks that that's a good situation to be in. So we were trying to find a way to do this for a speedy clerk. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I don't know if she would be thrilled with it, but <laughs> so we were trying to find a way to address that unintended consequence in a way that would limit the discussion of pay increases to the activities in the stipend, as opposed to just sort of restarting a wage study that just concluded. Um, so yeah, that would be my my answer to that question and um, obviously the board's, the board's decision. I also understand uh, some of my colleagues are looking at this and maybe it should be evaluated through the personnel committee and a new salary structure established. And I, um, I certainly see the logic in that. This is, uh, and, and while the amendment that, or the um, resolution that was passed addresses the, uh, stipend for uh, the, the current period and annually uh, in that resolution. I, I do think that this, the, the stipend could be uh, uh, paid out this year, for example, and then um, through the personnel committee, uh, that salary range and maybe the salary ranges of our elected officials be reviewed and an adjustment made at some point during the year. Uh, so I, um, I'm certainly not in favor of uh, the resolution. Uh, the, and I think most everybody's heard my opinion on the um, uh, part two, which is the uh, resolution 2022-12203, which is the um, inflation payment uh, to the staff in general. Uh, that, that genie's out of the bottle. Uh, we, we can certainly gather it back in. We can point of order. Can... I'm sorry, do I have the this floor? Is, this is off topic. We haven't come to it yet. 
when yeah, just, when we discuss 11 e this is perfectly okay but we're discussing 11 d I'm, I'm sorry are we not discussing both no no just the first Take one at a time, time. All right. okay that's okay i'll save my powder for that then um so i obviously i'm not in favor of, of uh pulling the pulling the rug on this one i'm sorry commissioner you're you're not in favor of this stipend is, is that what i understand you do not understand correctly. I am not in favor of the of the proposed amendment. Okay. Commissioner Gross. Um, I, I've got a number of, of thoughts on, on this particular uh, proposal. Um, I supported the, the request uh, previously uh, for the stipend, uh, but I did, uh, Express a concern about perhaps there was another way that we could accomplish the, uh, the fact, if you will, and that is by adjusting uh, pay scale, which uh, Commissioner Smith alluded to. Um, but the other thing is, I was um, aghast at the lack of information that was provided to us in the very first resolution, as Commissioner Drick read. It, it's very, very skimpy and doesn't really tell the full story. And the full story being that um, as a result of the passage of Proposition 2 in the November elections, which changed the state's constitution, um, changes are going to take place and it will be the responsibility of the, all clerks, county as well as townships, to make significant changes in how they conduct elections. The most prominent feature being nine days of early voting. Uh, that's gonna require additional preparation, uh, timing of the uh, uh, availability of employees involved, additional training. Um, and my initial thought was, well, that won't happen until 2024. But I have heard on good authority from several township clerks that they anticipate that they will be making changes to their procedures during this calendar year. Um, the other aspect uh, that was not made clear when we voted on this uh, previously was that this is an unfunded mandate. We're not gonna get any reimbursement of expense from the state. This is entirely on our shoulders. And so if our clerk and her staff are gonna have extra effort over and above their original job description, job responsibilities, I, I think an adjustment is in order. And um, my only concern is that I would rather see it handled through a, a salary um, scale change as opposed to a stipend. But, um, just my thoughts on the subject, thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, it seems to me that we are going over a field that's already been plowed um, by others. Um, and for that reason, I don't uh, approve this uh, approach, but what I, what, what I wanna get is, is this something that our new members are asking for? Okay, <clears throat> if our new members are asking for it, I understand a reason to look into it. If the new members are at ease with what has been done by the former uh, board, then I think that we ought not to do it. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would ask that we get the opinion of our new board members that, uh, What's their opinion on this? I think you've been following it enough. I, I would like to hear what what's your ideas are about this. Commissioner Drake, would you read uh, that uh, <clears throat> motion, please? The clerk has it. The clerk has got the, the only copy Drake, we have. <clears throat> excuse me. Commissioner Drake moved uh, resolution 2022-12-202 dated December 27th, 2022 be not implemented and not effective as hereby postponed, giving discretion to the board chair to replace on a future agenda. And it was supported by Commissioner Gross. 
And now this resolution that you're referring to that will be post postponed possibly, what does that exactly provide? Administrator Bird, I did not write this resolution. Do you want to address that resolution? It's in the approved agenda minutes. I apologize. What, what, what question was proposed about the resolution that was passed? Yeah, what, what was the resolution about that we are considering to, to uh, put on the postpone? The resolution that passed last week? Yes. Um, I'll just summarize the last point. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners hereby approves a $7,500 annual stipend of the county clerk in recognition of election responsibilities. The stipend will be increased each year with any applicable board approved cost of living adjustment and is provided in addition to her board approved compensation. So as it stands now, that is the action that takes place from the resolution that was passed unless something changes. Indicated that we already do have stipends in the county mm -hmm. for for three other countywide elected officials. Well, we have one in the in the DPW. The drain commissioner, as yep. a drain commissioner, is yep. is a paid elected official. Mm -hmm. And once once he assumed the responsibility of the DPW, Department of Public Works, he was he was given by the board uh, a stipend of I forget what the number was, but it was substantial. Yeah. And I believe the same thing happened uh, with uh, the remonumentation program. Who was in, uh, was that out of, uh, pardon me? The Register of Deeds. Mm -hmm. So it's clear that that stipends are have, have a definite purpose and they're not necessarily pay increases. I'm not, somebody else can define it differently if they want. But I think there's an opportunity to handle this where we don't start awarding stipends which have a definite purpose specifically um, for uh, where, when other means are available to recognize uh, the need for a pay increase. Is that pretty much what you're thinking is? Yes, Commissioner. Yes, I'm not against stipends. I'd like to know that when a resolution hits here, it touches on four, three, five, criteria that we've all decided they're important to know. So we have that information and Commissioner Gross is not aghast as to the lack of information or I'm worried about the severe vagueness of the uh, reasoning in the resolution. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have, have the criteria and it's merely a postponement. It's not saying anything about the worth or the number or the value or any of those things. I'd like to have some criteria to decide this one and then for any other one that comes up. So, yes, Commissioner Smith. So this race is a really interesting issue. The other stipends are already in place. They're not reviewed annually. Uh, they occur automatically. I would think if I were one of the other recipients of a stipend, I would be very concerned right now. Hmm. Uh, Councilor, is that true? I think I've sat in board meetings where we annually approve stipends. I don't know that detail. I'll, I'll just say you could, um, and it may be part of your budget approval process that you're doing so on an annual basis. And we may not even know about it. I can't, I can't comment on that. Yes, Commissioner Nakaguri. Yeah, I'd like to just to chime in on the discussion. Um, I'm in support of um, maintaining or keeping the stipend for the county clerk. Um, there's a couple things that are, um, you know, way in on my uh, thinking. One is that, uh, uh, and it's been mentioned already, the um, the deputy clerk, um, if, if we don't make a change, will uh, uh, eventually make more money than the clerk. I just think that's inappropriate for the, that pay scale is in, inappropriate. Um, the, the clerk should, um, being the, the manager, the leader should, should make more than the, than the deputy. The, um, 
with the uh, passing of Prop 9, or excuse me, Prop 2, um, adding nine days of extra voting for, for reasons that, you know, uh, many of the township clerks came and spoke in, in favor of the stipend just, just recently at a recent committee meeting. I am persuaded that that is the um, having a stipend uh, for the work involved with the um, the extra days of voting is um, is, is appropriate um, to uh, to pay to pay the stipend. The um, I think that um, in, anyway that I um, am supportive. I just wanted to, for the record, say I'm supportive of the stipend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? Commissioner Sample. I'm sorry, did you have your hand up, uh, Mr. Bird? No, I did not. Are you just waving? I'm just, you're doing writing. fine. Commissioner Sample. So I have a question. Yeah. The previous mm -hmm. Commissioner Sample, if you could please speak into your microphone. Yeah, here we go. Were the previous stipends given to the following budget year or were they given during that budget year? So I may need to defer to people who were here, but my understanding is they were approved initially by the board with the understanding and resolution that they would be annual moving forward, which is the same way that this is written. So they are part of our budget every year based on when they were initially authorized. Yeah, the reason for the, the reason for my question is that the stipend that's given, is that because of the work that was performed in 22? 2022, or is it for the work that we perceive is going to be done in 2023? Because I guess what I'm getting at is we're given a stipend that's paid in 2023, but is it the understanding was for the work that was performed in 22 and the additional works there, the additional work that we're perhaps envisioning going forward? In this situation, it would be the additional work envisioned going forward that will start in 23 to prep for 24 and then from here on out. So this um, might not be enough. This might this it, might not it, recognize it, the, the, yeah. the effort that's involved in what's it, going to go forward. It may very well need to be revised with real world information as we as we get that. So so not only if we approve the stipend as it is, we may have to revisit the fact that this wage needs to be increased on top of the stipends potentially, right? Potentially. Yeah. So so for all of us here thinking about this. I guess we may or we may not agree that the, the stipend is the right way to do it, but we obviously all see that there's a point here that the clerk's office are going to be tremendously burdened and have been burdened in the past. So there's a need for a wage increase, not only because there's a deficit between the deputy, deputy clerk, but just the work in general. So I guess for me as a new commissioner, because I was asked a question is what do I think about it? I think that there's an understanding that there needs to be compensation for the work going forward, whether that be in a stipend or a wage. So that's how I view it. Commissioner Smith. And, uh, if I can ask the administrator to clarify how these stipends are, are paid. And I'm gonna are ask the CFO, I, I actually don't know what timing those get paid. I don't know if Cindy or Jennifer can chime in on that. I see Jennifer's on that. I'll defer to Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, commissioners. Yeah, so with the stipends and um, and frankly, we've set this up for payment already um, moving forward um, for for uh, the county clerk. But those are added into as regular compensation, um, and I believe only the register of deeds because his is approved separately. His stipend is not subject to the cost of living adjustment approved by the board of commissioners. Uh, all other stipends are effectively baked into the other wage and all, uh, to their salaries and are also subject. So they're increased by the approved COLA each year. So uh, cost of living adjustment that's that's approved by the board. Can, can I put that in simple banker language? So so it becomes part of their paycheck. Yes. Thank you. Each pay. <clears throat> And does it have a termination date? No. It doesn't. Every year it's uh, renewed every year. Seems to me that, well, I don't know, you'll, you'll know more about this than I will, but uh, the drain commissioner's office annually receives a stipend for the work they do as uh, the DPW. 
Correct. Even, uh, yep. And that's divided up equally as well for 26 pay periods per year and receive the pro rata portion is received each payroll um, to the drain commissioner. Whereas the stipend that was provided for the uh, um, uh, surveying remonumentation program was annually provided to one of our elected officials so that that money could be distributed to civil engineers for the surveying they did. Essentially, that's what it was. Uh, that's two different two different things that we're talking. You're right. Under that remonumentation resolution, there is specified money for, um, I think it's Jack, the surveyor, um, but there's also specific money that goes to the drain, I'm sorry, the uh, register of deeds himself that's divided equally throughout the year and received in his paycheck on a biweekly basis. And is this proposal that we're considering here structured along those same lines? Is there anything that makes this a, a new and unique uh, stipend? Or are there certain I, stipend rules? Counselor? I'm sorry, I, I can't answer I can't answer that question as far as how the county's internally classified this. So, The intention, as I understood it, was to treat it as other, uh, another example would be the county treasurer. She has received a stipend that's also, uh, you know, we, we take the total annual stipend, divide it out by the number of pays, and it's received each biweekly in her paycheck. I, so the, my understanding was to handle this one in the same way, based on the information and the resolution. Mr. Dirk, do you have any other thoughts? My recollection of the wording of the resolution had nothing in it. It was silent as to the future nine days. Right. Silent. It was totally about past effort. And therefore, I think we need some criteria to help us along the next time. That's, and it's a it's a adjournment. It's not a cancellation. It's not a throw it out the throw it out the window. It's still available as the criteria. Are. If we take a month to get some criteria, come back, consider it, vote it. Thank you. Are there any? I'm sorry. Go ahead, I just Mr. Fiani. A, a Robert's Whoop. rule of orders question, which I I probably better read this sucker now. Um, <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> but maybe uh, uh, our, our council can inform me. If we have, uh, this is probably a technical issue, but if we have uh, a board approval and it's been enacted in terms of our uh, human resources department putting it, putting it in, in place about to happen, can we even consider it or do we need a brand new resolution? So again, this is my understanding. We haven't issued the payroll. So it would, you are onto something here, which is partly what I referenced in my prior little discussion about this, which is it would not be in order if it could not be undone. It would, if it, let's say the, the stipend was a $7,500 lump sum payment on January 1st. If that check had been paid, this motion would not be in order. My understanding of the current fact pattern is that although it is processed, for payment, it, the payment has not yet been made, so it would be in order for you to consider the motion that is before you. Okay, thank you. Is there, is there any other discussion? Yes, um, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I, I think we should uh, um, go ahead and, and let the prior resolution become effective. But I think as a result of the discussion tonight, we've made it pretty loud and clear that henceforth, any resolution coming before this board damn well have a lot of information attached to it and not be so vague and subject to misunderstanding, uh, which I think is, is Commissioner Drick's primary concern. Uh, I share that concern and uh, you know, 
we need to have the information surrounding the concept, the idea presented to us so that we really know what we're doing, what we're voting on uh, as clearly as possible. And uh, so I, I think we should go ahead with the stipend or a salary adjustment. I think there's a, a strong need for it, um, regardless of how the resolution has been worded. Uh, that part is behind us. Let's hopefully have a better pr process going forward. Thank you. So the, the resolution right now asks for a postponement, doesn't ask for approval, if I'm correct. I can read. I can read the motion, um, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Drick moved Resolution 2022-12-202, dated December 27th, 2022, be not implemented and not effective as hereby postponed, giving discretion to the board chair to replace on a future agenda. That's the motion um, made by Commissioner Drick, supported by Commissioner Gross. I personally think that if what we uh, hear this evening is factual and that the, uh, um, the clerk does assume these additional responsibilities, even though we're not getting reimbursed by the state for it, that doesn't leave us off the hook we could take that approach with almost anything. Uh, and uh, it's unfortunate that the only thing left that we appear to have would be a stipend or to reject that stipend and somehow work it in through a uh, um, uh, increase in income. Mr. Chair, can we vote on this now? I'm asking for a vote on this now. I'm just asking you if is it possible for us to go around? Sure, sure, everything is possible. Yes, uh, Commissioner. Can you read it? Do you want me to read? I want to just clarify what would you like me to read the motion one more time? You're, you're voting on the, the motion to. Um, move resolution, this resolution dated not to be implemented and not effective as hereby postponed, giving discretion to the board chair to replace on a future agenda. So that's the actual motion made by Commissioner Drick, supported by Commissioner Gross. So that's what you're voting on. Yeah. Are there any other comments? Any of the discussion going? All right, then we'll hear a vote on this motion. All those in favor of postponing this stipend until some future date selected by me. I knew I'd get in this somehow. Uh, please raise your right hand or say aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed? Aye. aye. We'll move on to the next resolution. You have another one, Commissioner Drake. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I just voted against the, uh, the proposed amendment, uh, having supported it earlier. And the reason for that is I felt it was a topic that needed discussion by the full board. And so that's why I supported Commissioner Drake's um, uh, motion. Um, but I, I don't feel it would, it's in our best interest to postpone anything. Thank you. I think we. I think you've made a point, and and uh, we'll we'll leave it at that. We have one more resolution, uh, Commissioner. Derek, did you have another resolution? I yield the floor to Commissioner uh, Fiani. Okay. Uh, I move to discuss resolution two zero two two dash one, two, dash two, oh, three. Motion made by Commissioner Fiani, is it supported? Is that you? Drake. Drake, okay. Could you tell us the guts of it? So I, I simply made the motion because it was on the agenda earlier. So, and I actually would like to entertain the discussion as well. 
um, simply because here we are as a new board. So maybe we have a better chance. So I know I noticed that it is going to impact our general fund reserves um, to the tune of over one point five million dollars. So I'm just interested in the entertaining discussion and. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna vote on the motion to uh, discuss it. To discuss it. Yep. All, right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Aye. Commissioner Fiandi, do you want to start then? I I don't have much to say. I'm all ears and looking forward to uh, being well informed and well versed. Okay, Commissioner Drake. This board has full and sole authority as we sit here now, sworn in January 3, 2023. Full authority over the budget. Yet, five of the elected people that are now sitting up here were not voters at all on this resolution to drain 1.5, 1.5, 1.6 million out of the budget. I think that voting on the 27th was premature. I think voting should have occurred sometime in January. I think it's unfair to the voters that put the four people on this board that were unable, that weren't sworn in yet to make decisions for next year's budget. I think that, uh, it's just unfair that they don't get a vote on whether this should occur. It's a motion to uh, postpone again. It's not a motion to destroy it or forever throw it away. It's just that the people that should have been voting on this didn't get a chance to vote. And Commissioner Nakagiri was sick. He, was, he couldn't vote either. So that's five people that were elected in November that didn't get to vote on it. I, uh, I find that uh, unacceptable in a republic democracy. Mr. Gross. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, several comments. Uh, first, a point of clarification. Um, the one-time bonus payment of 1.6 million is not in the budget. Um, it came up after the budget was uh, was finalized. If we go ahead and, and make those payments, it will come. The money will come out of our balance fund, which can handle uh, that amount uh, withdrawal, if you will. But this is an unfunded uh, activity, uh, which I have some heartburn on. Um, and when we voted on it uh, in December, I also expressed concern about the timing. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, I, I'm not willing to say let's postpone, but I do express a concern about the timing. And uh, as I said, I wanted to clarify what the source of funding would be. So that, that's all I have at this point. Thank you. I knew I'd get somebody. Uh, I, uh, um, Commissioner Drick's point is that our new commissioners did not have a chance to consider or vote on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have no question that uh, the, the former board had complete authority to do this. Uh, and I have as much trust in uh, that collective uh, wisdom as I do in the collective wisdom of the people sitting here. Um, uh, in my mind, it's the question, do we want to reverse course or do we want to put uh, a doubt in people's minds as to where we're going? If we, if we reconsider and uh, at the, the, the 1st of February, we uh, make the same decision, You know, it seems to me that we should have some pretty good reasons to change direction. Uh, people that really think that uh, the wisdom of the last board was wrong, 
uh, it seems to me that that's the only reason we should uh, consider a po po postponement. And again, I would like to hear from our new commissioners because uh, this this was uh, this movement is for them. It's not for us who were here. So I I personally would ask the new commissioners to weigh in on this um, in a general sense, because again, you don't know all the facts in detail, so. Can you, uh, Commissioner, just in, uh, in, in brief, give us some concept of what this resolution is that, and what it's gonna cost and why are you That's so Nathan, supporting it? Nathan. Oh. I think it's a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> you know, Nathan has the has the details. I recommend our administrator come forward. Commissioner Bird, not Commissioner Bird. Still I, that. still I didn't get didn't want to give you a pay cut. I get that once a month. Um, so just for some some background um, for the new commissioners and for everybody, really, the budget for 2023 included a three percent cost of living adjustment. So that's the amount that was factored in for COLA's cost of living adjustments for next year for our staff. As you all probably know, inflation has been hovering between seven and eight percent over the course of the last year or more. And so three percent doesn't necessarily keep up with the cost of living. And so um, you look at what the federal government did last week, their average COLA was 4.6% for federal workers. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, the private sector wages are going to increase by about 4.6% in 2023. And yet we had a 3% cost of living adjustment. And so we're in a very competitive market for people. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we can continue to retain and attract good people. And yet our COLA is off from what we're seeing in other places. And so the way that this was structured was to... Uh, not increase the COLA because frankly, we the budget would be tight. If we if we did a four or 5% COLA, our budget was getting tight. And so we're comfortable with the 3% cost of living adjustment, but we wanted to utilize other dollars that are available to assist employees um, through next year. That's, that's and again, this was Commissioner Smith's idea, so I hope I'm not speaking uh, on your behalf, but when we, when we sat down and tried to work this out, that was the rationale for it. How do we compensate our employees well through, through next year, understanding these challenges still exist? And so, uh, as was correctly referenced earlier, it's about $1.6 million is what it would, what it would cost to do this. Um, for full-time employees, it's $2,080. It's really simple, it's a dollar an hour, work per year, regular hours. So a full-time employee works 2,080 hours, 2,080 bucks. Ottawa County gave $5,000. Don't know how they did it. Don't know why they did it. St. Clair County had a really complicated tier from 1250 up to like four. Not sure why they did it. We were trying to find something really simple. So if you're a part-time or a half-time employee here, it'd be $1,040. If you work, you know, it's just based on a dollar an hour per work. So it's a simple formula that we think that dollar amount then puts us in a position to be fair, remain competitive, um, and, and really take care of our staff through what continues to be a difficult times. Uh, the resolution specifies the money would come out of our general fund balance, which is really, really healthy because of really good fiscal decisions made by this board over the year. Our general fund balance grows every year. Right now we're at around $37 million. We like to retain at least 2930 of that because we like to have half of our annual general fund budget be available in fund balance. And so we're well above that right now. The ideal uses for fund balance are one-time expenses, things that do not carry over year after year, things that don't compound. So to take this out of general fund balance would still leave us in a very healthy position uh, with our finances and with our, our reserves, with our fund balance. So that's a little bit of the rationale uh, behind it. And I don't wanna necessarily make an argument for, for retention or turnover. I, I, want the, I, I would prefer that it be focused on helping people through difficult times that work at the county. But I do want the new commissioners to know this. We, we, are, we were just named a top workplace, right? We have a really good administrator to work with. <laughs> um, so we've got, all this, we've got all this good stuff going for us, but the number of people applying for jobs here is crapping out big time. Five years ago, we had about 70 applications for every job. We're less than 20 right now. And so we, we need to do something. We need to make sure that we're well positioned to continue to attract people here. When we have high level vacancies, we've been very fortunate that we found the right person 
But if that right person didn't exist, there were no other applicants. There were nobody else to consider. And so my concern is that if we don't do something above what the COLA provides, um, we're going to start to slip a little bit in terms of our attractiveness as an employer and, um, you know, wouldn't want to see that happen. But, you know, just to be blunt, this, this can be afforded with our fund balance without causing any sort of complications to the budget. It's not a budgetary matter. It's, it's think of it as coming out of the savings account, um, which is appropriate again for as a one-time use. Uh, and it's just for 2023. It doesn't reference anything that would go on to future years. It would just be for this year. So appreciate the chance just to give the overview. Mr. Smith. Yeah, just if I can elaborate just for a, a moment, and I'd ask Jennifer to correct me if I'm wrong, but when we looked at the average uh, COLA, not even COLA is the right word, but the average pay increase over roughly the last 10 years, we had several years where uh, our employees were, were great and they stuck with us and they received nothing. They had other years where they received 1%. And, I, and I'm talking about the years obviously where, where we were adamant about holding on to a 50% a general fund balance. And it was some pretty tough economic times. Um, and our employees were great. And then, uh, but even after that, uh, you know, I know they didn't average 2.2% wages in the last 10 years. Uh, I haven't done the math, but I'm, I'm absolutely certain it didn't, didn't exceed 2.2% per annum. Um, and now we come into a point where, you know, you can Google, you know, uh, uh, inflation over the last 24 months, which is really what I've been preoccupied with uh, for a lot of reasons. But when I equate it to our personnel uh, and how uh, diligent and how hard they work, I really felt it was important to do something. Uh, and uh, Jennifer can, can probably give you better detail than I can, but you know this, this idea of a one-time dollar an hour really... Uh, they received a COLA last year of, I believe, 4%, 3% this year. And in a time where their dollar is uh, only buying 81 cents of what it used to buy. So uh, this, this dollar an hour is a one-time payment. And if our average pay is, I don't know, Jennifer, 60, is that right? It would be less than that okay. <clears throat> overall. We let closer to 45 or 50. Okay, all right. So you guys can do the math from there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think it's also really good for the discussion. And when we first saw the agenda recently, um, it's difficult to find a lot of information. Um, and as a newly elected, you know, our constituents are, are bringing us, you know, in, and then here we, you know, we're going to come back to them after day one with a 1.5, 1.7, and then some other stipends. So, you know, I personally didn't have enough information on it. It was great that everybody put this forward for discussion. Um, this um, afternoon, I, I got on our website really quickly and to what Administrator Bird was saying about employees, uh, tried to read the MGT studies as fast as I could to get some of the top reasons why we were losing some of our top people and why people weren't coming here. Salary was in the top six, you know, quality of life. So um, you know, as a newly elected, it, it's uh, good for discussion. So when this comes up, um, you know, I, I heard the, the comment from one of the commissioners about, you know, the prior board. I, I was blessed to get to meet and talk to a lot of them and, uh, and hear their thoughts and, uh, and views on items. So um, there's no doubt on their decision. It was just that we walked in and I'm not going to speak for all of us. And we're seeing these, um, you know, big hits to our budget. So this discussion is, is really good to see where these numbers come from. Um, you know, being in business and owning a business, uh, you just don't throw a, a stipend out there or a pay raise until you do your background. And, um, you know, the, the VA and the Social Security, I think, is going up 8 or 9%. So, you know, I'm seeing other, um, you know, COLAs increasing. I have not had a chance to look at all the other counties, um, but that's what, you know, uh, Mr. Bird is, is getting paid to, to do for us, I guess. So um, I just wanted to make that comment that, you know, coming in here, um, you know, you have one view, but we're mature enough to know that we have to get more information. And I think that's what we're, we're pulling together here um, before any postponement. Um, I, I heard, you know, a postpone of any of these, but um, it sounds like they're already in motion. So um, I just want to make a comment on that because, uh, you know, we are newly elected. We're trying to pull in a lot of information. 
uh, to make decisions uh, for our constituents. And um, you know, you feel like you're you're getting your feet to the fire here, but um, you know, it's good information. So I appreciate the dialogue and information coming in. Thank you. Commissioner Nakaguri. Yeah, I um, just wanted to chime in on the discussion here. Um, you know, one of the um, biggest measures that I look at, you know, in terms of are we fairly compensating our employees is um, what is our turnover rate? I've said this before publicly. And so I looked at turnover rates, um, you know, got them from HR. Um, over the last four or five years, they've been uh, pretty flat, you know, 16%, 15%. But it's not, you know, it's it's not what I would have expected to see if I if if I concluded that our wage is were way out of whack with the marketplace, that we are falling way behind. I would have expected to see our um, our um, terminal rates increasing, but in fact. Uh, on the data that I've seen, it's it's been flat over four or five years. So uh, I'm not sure that we, <clears throat> from a uh, market standpoint, that we that we need to do anything further. Uh, I know, you know, with our wage study that was just completed this year, if my memory serves me correct, uh, uh, that you know um, we have effectively. Um, increased our our compensation by five percent when we implemented the um, the uh, findings from the wage state. Now, not everybody got five percent. Some people got more. Some people got less. But if you looked at you know our um, uh, compensation overall, it was about uh, five percent over the course of this year, which is not an insubstantial number, and and not a and, and in my view, nothing to. Uh, sneeze at. Um, the, the last thing I want to comment on is this um, a resolution to for the inflation payment. We are uh, paying all employees a, a dollar an hour, whether they're part of a collective bargaining unit or, or whether they're non-union. And I just think it's inappropriate for us to be giving away things to um, uh, employees that are represented by a collective bargaining unit. I mean, it, things should be bargained for. Um, if, if we we shouldn't be, in my opinion, be uh, unilaterally um, giving um, this inflation payment, it, it should come as part of a negotiated agreement with, uh, at least for the, um, for the unions. So that's um, my two cents on the subject. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to relay a couple of questions I had that perhaps we can um, discuss right now. Um, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Hauserman's um, uh, enthusiasm for getting our, getting our opinions as uh, we're trying to absorb as much as we can, as quick as we can. Um, one question I had was, as to how come the uh, the judges um, for the, the county were um, left out of this this stipend, um, I, I I just think it would. Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, this was asked. Uh, uh, I, I guess I guess there's an there's an answer. I can I, answer that if you'd like. Oh, okay. There's a lot of answers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so judges are actually not. County employees, their their funding and pay, although routed through the county, is from the state of Michigan. So we do not establish compensation for judges. Okay, even even that that frac the fractional portion. Correct. I thought there was a fractional portion that came through uh, from the county directly. There may be a, a partial payment, that, but it is not. They're they're not classified as county employees. I appreciate the answer. Thank you. Are there any other comments? I just thought I'd throw my two cents in here and 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 remind everyone that if you believe that this county could never be in financial trouble, you're sadly mistaken. 
because it was. When we laid off, why well, we laid off people, we went from full-time to part-time. We reduced the workforce from 700 to 500. We quit hiring people. We were in serious trouble. Those of you who were here at that time, in fact, some of the people who were here at the time on union uh, uh, contracts uh, suffered as well. It wasn't, it wasn't a time for, for uh, that it, anybody walked out of here with except a good job. They always had a place to go to work. And so uh, we were in dire straits and the only way we could come back was to tighten the reins, to just choke up on it and to spend less. I don't know of any county that ever made money by spending it, but I sure can cite on some of them that lost money by spending it and wasting it. This county has been wise and its ancestors on this board, from this board, have been very humble about their power to tax the people. In fact, we can't tax anybody any more than a specified amount for county operations. The townships, the cities, and the villages all have that opportunity to increase tax money. We don't, unless it's with the, with the consent of the people. It's gotta go before the people for a vote. So I would say <clears throat> the money we're talking about here, my first question was, where does it come from? It comes from those same people that we come from and they're not making any more money either. And they can't walk up and get raises and bonuses, so forth. Not to say that we shouldn't be doing some of these things, but we can't take it so lightly that it's almost a given. And maybe the numbers are too big. I'm sure we deserve, we, we have good people and they deserve to be compensated. Uh, I'm concerned that, that $1.6 million is a lot of money where I come from. You know, it seems that when you spread it out over a buck a head, it doesn't seem like very much. So I, I'm, not, I'm not supportive of, of doing this without some additional information or perhaps some, um, some negotiation. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to the board if there's any other comments. Not, uh, you wanna have that resolution read again, uh, Commissioner? <laughs> it was just a resolution for discussion. And all right, so that's the discussion. It was approved and we had our discussion. All right. So the question now is, is there any motion to, is there any movement from this discussion? Are we going to take any position from this discussion? Everybody's happy? Well, happy's good. Yes, Commissioner. If we do nothing uh, and just leave it as a discussion, uh, what is the outcome <coughs> that we move forward with the 1.6 million expenditure? Is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> I, I would make a. I am going to make a motion that we postpone the implementation of the resolution number um, ended in the inflation payment resolution uh, that ended in two hundred three. So uh, yeah. Um, Thank you, Commissioner Gross. So I'm making a motion to postpone the implementation of resolution 2022-12-203. Is there support? Second, Drake. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir, Commissioner Smith. No, Commissioner Oldman. Oh. Um, I so far as our employees are concerned, they have it. That's all I'm gonna say. Hey, Mr. Smith. Uh, yeah, the idea of perceptions, uh, reality. Um, so Mr. Hilsman's, uh, Commissioner Hilsman's point is well taken. Um, 
we've we've had a lot of arguments about about this, uh, and and I'm I'm afraid that uh, we also have to be very careful that we don't undo things that are already in place uh, with some of the negotiations. Uh, which I don't think I'm even at liberty to talk about because we have to go to closed session <laughs> if I remember my rules. So uh, I, I would, perception is a very big deal. Uh, it, it, I, I certainly understand that it's a lot of money. Uh, per taxpayer household, it comes down to about $18.75, $18.75, which is not insignificant. Uh, per, Per county resident, yeah, it's, you know, whatever, it's 80, 80 cents a head or whatever. Um, and you're right, it is a lot of money. I don't, I don't take it lightly at all. Um, but we have to start thinking long, longer term. We have more than a balanced budget. Uh, and it's largely due to the credit, not, not of any great doing we've done as board of commissioners, either uh, this past board or, or prior boards. It's because of the diligence of the employees we have. They, they come forward with proposals and we challenge them on proposals and we test them and we ask them to be extremely cost conscious. We've had a couple of examples lately where Numbers were thrown out to, you know, for certain capital projects. And, and I got to tell you, the phone lines were red hot the next morning saying, oh, oh we got we to talk about this. This is real money. And uh, to their credit, all the division heads have come back and said, yeah, you're right. That's, that, that's not a number we can live with either. And, and, and we're, you know, so they take it very seriously when we, when we test them on, uh, on their proposals and on, and on the request for financing. Um, so the fact that we're at a, a roughly... Uh, I'll call it a uh, eight million to be conservative uh, position ahead of our plan on the general fund budget, uh, which which I think everybody knows we always try to keep roughly fifty percent of our operating uh, budget in the general fund. Uh, it helps us keep our AAA bond rating, et cetera. So uh, the fact that we're you know conservatively eight million ahead of that is uh, is not a testament to the board. It really is a testament to the to the various division heads and, and their employees, because uh, they come up with ideas to save money all the time and they do a great job. Um, in, in comparison to what we're requesting, uh, gosh, guys, uh, this would really appear to be pulling the rug out on them. I, I, I would just beg you to keep that in All of you that are still on Zoom, they're aware that Zoom has crashed on the, on the board chambers. I think they're working on it currently. Cindy, this is test, 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 test. We're able to test, hear you. Test. You're coming in loud and clear. <laughs> test. We can hear you. Madam Clerk, would you please resume uh, the meeting and give us some place to start? Do we have a 
read the last resolution. Yes, prior to um, the short recess, we had a motion by Commissioner Nakagiri to postpone resolution 2022-12-203, and that was second by um, Commissioner Drick. Okay. Yes, sir. Commissioner Drick. I have a big smile on my face tonight at this point because I started out saying the people that should have voted on this didn't get to in December, but now they're gonna get a chance to vote on it. It was a long way that we had to go around the barn, but the new guys tonight get to vote on it. And then remember there were five that didn't get to vote on it in December. So I'm happy that we now get to vote on it. I, it's okay, whichever way it goes. I'm not, uh, I'm not upset, whatever the will of the board is, that's mm -hmm. terrific, but we're, I think we're doing it the correct way now. So we're proceeding that the board that's in charge of the 23 budget is actually voting on this number for the 23 budget. Hey, Mr. Drake, I, I appreciate your perseverance. I always have. Thank you so much. Hey, Mr. D Nakagiri, you had a comment? Yeah, I wanted to share um, perspectives with uh, my colleagues and any, any people in the room. Um, the, um, uh, as I've, I said earlier tonight, the, um, uh, I'm not, I don't think it's appropriate for the County Board of Commissioners to give uh, inflation payment to collective bargaining. It needs to be collectively bargained. And we, the, uh, the taxpayers, Need to you know be um, assured that we're 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 bargaining on their behalf and the, and the union is bargaining on, on their behalf. So when we have this inflation payment that is um, I'm going to say um, not bargained for, I, I just uh, have a problem with that. I don't I don't agree with that. Um, I do want to also share that you know if if the um, collective bargaining was uh, deal uh, that we had to sweeten the pot, that we had to put in inflation payments, uh, maybe the exact number that uh, is being proposed in this resolution, 20, uh, 2,080 bucks for full-time. Uh, and, and that's what it costs to get a collective bargaining agreement. I'm very comfortable voting for that because that is a negotiated settlement. So, um, and then if you build on to that, uh, one more uh, layer, um, if, if uh, through collective bargaining, it's, uh, it, it was a buck an hour inflation pay. Um, I, you know, am also very comfortable with um, saying for non-union folks that I'm gonna uh, vote in favor of the same inflation pay that was negotiated with the collective bargaining. I, I just see that's an issue of fairness. Um, but what I'm not inclined to do is to go out of sequence and um, give, let's say, a benefit that was, you know, part of a collective bargaining process as the first step in the in this whole um, deciding what is the fair amount of compensation. So anyway, I just wanted to share that point of view, and so that people knew where I'm coming from and my rationale. And you may not agree with me, but at least you'll know why I think the way I do, and you can um, leave it at that. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Is there any, any other discussion here? Do we have a motion on the floor? We do. Would you repeat A motion it by Commissioner Nakagiri to postpone resolution 2022-12-203, seconded by Commissioner Drick. So that is not a, that is not a motion to, um, to uh, eliminate this. It's a, it's, a, it's a motion to postpone it. Is that correct? Correct. Commissioner Gross, you have a comment. Um, I'm wondering if um, the resolution is for a postponement, uh, what would be the effective date that this could take place? Are we seeing, uh, you know, March 1st, June 1st, September 1st? Uh, I think we need to specify uh, some sort of an effective date. 
Well, I'll give you one right now if you'd like it. Well, maybe I won't. Uh, we'll have to work on that. But I would think that if we couldn't settle something like this in 30 days, and we don't, uh, we'll settle it in 30 days, whatever the most convenient board meeting is at that time. If you want to add that to your resolution. Doesn't it say, doesn't the motion say that uh, it puts it in the chair's hands? No, no the, this motion no. didn't say that. No. I, I would just ask you to. Um, would, I'm happy to read it back uh, if you would like, Commissioner Helzerman. I would just suggest that you put the same language as we did on the last one that it was postponed until the. Um, Board chair, there you go. And put it on the, on the agenda, Commissioner Smith. Yeah, I just want to point out that we, we don't have the full uh, resolution in front of us, but uh, my recollection is, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that we did uh, put in uh, to address your concern the fact that uh, the uh, for this to be effective, uh, the the contract had to be uh, agreed to uh, at least verbally. It, it, and I'm going to actually ask Nathan, is that your recollection as well? I don't have it in front of me. So the resolution um, as it relates to collective bargaining agreements say that it's only applicable if collective bargaining agreements, which are now open to negotiation, uh, are ratified and execu executed by all parties on or before February 15th, 2023. So if we don't have deals in place February 15th, 2023, or agreements in place, then this resolution would not apply to those units. We have four that are open right now. Yep. As the um, maker of the motion to postpone, um, there is no time frame. Um, therefore, it's... Um, it would be a motion to postpone indefinitely, but I'm, you know, if somebody wants to amend it to put a specific time frame on it, I'm, you know, they're they're more than welcome to, they're, and they have the right to do that. So, chair, will accept the uh, an amendment to postpone to a given date, uh, and also I'd like to include um, that whatever settlement is reached, it will be um, effective January first. I don't think you can do retroactive. Some 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 of our agreements won't allow us to do that. Okay. Is that true? So I'm not entirely clear on what the concept is here. I will just say that for um, non Act 312 bargaining unit employees, we are not permitted to do retroactive payment of wages. As I understand it, the way this payment is structured is it is a going forward basis. Um, I don't want to comment much on what is on the floor, other than as I understand it, this is simply a motion to postpone without a date, the questions presented in this resolution. And I believe if that is the conclusion of the discussion, or if somebody wants to try to amend, well, the motion, um, that would be a separate issue for the table. Okay. Are we clear on the motion and do we accept the motion as it has just been read? <clears throat> Commissioner Gross. Um, Chairman, I, uh, I'm willing to vote on the resolution as presented. I just expressed a concern relative to timing. I don't think it's Commissioner Gross, if you could speak into the microphone, it'd be very helpful. Thank you. Motion has been moved and supported. I think this, yes. Can we roll call this, please? Thank you. Um, Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. No. Commissioner Fiani. No. Commissioner Gross. No. 
Commissioner Helzerman? No. Commissioner Domus? Yes. Commissioner Sample? No. You have five no's, four yeses. Motion to amend fails. Motion to postpone, excuse me. Motion to move into closed session? Yes, support. We need a, we need a motion to close into closed session again. I don't do. think so. I, I know yes. it was moved it by right. it was moved by Commissioner Niani. Who who supported that? I'm sorry. Yes. Commissioner um, Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. Commissioners, if you can give us just a few minutes to get everyone in on Zoom into the waiting room. So and technically, if you strictly construe the yep. meetings, act, commissioners, the folks are back in from the waiting room. It's just procedural. Okay. It's okay to sure. make a motion to come out of closed session, but it's just a voice vote anyway, so it's okay. very common. All right. Okay. We're back in open session. Yes. Madam Clerk, what's the next item on the agenda? Um, it's item number. 2022-23, excuse me, dash 01 dash 004. Do you have a copy of that resolution? Okay. It's a resolution approving the tentative agreement for a three year agreement between the Livingston County Sheriff's Department, the Livingston County Board of Commissioners, and the Police Officers Labor Union Council representing sergeants. This comes to us from Human Resources. So moved, Drick, for discussion. Support, Hauserman. Okay. So moved and supported for discussion. So we'll discuss it, and then if we did, and then that doesn't preclude another res, uh, motion to uh, to move on it. Please, to start. Who's to start? Discussion. I'm voting yes. That's, that's my discussion. I'm voting yes. Is there no res? Is there Are you looking for a motion to uh, approve the uh, the motion? Because we only have a motion to you discuss. Have a motion on the floor yeah, to okay. approve the resolution. Okay. Hearing no uh, discussion, I'd ask to call the question of the vote. All right, so we'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nine to nothing, it wins. Our last call to the public. Anyone in the audience? You said you wouldn't call. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't help it. I, I, I would just like to say this, and I mentioned this to the uh, previous board. Um, I've been around for a minute or two, and it seems that there's uh, a little bit of lack of communication amongst the board members, that things are uh, discussed here maybe for the first time. Um, and, and as much as I'm all about open meetings and transparency and all that, thousand percent, but I think there's uh, room for improvement. Um, so please don't take this the wrong way. We're all got, we all got thick skin, but um, you know, it previously boards had communicated amongst each other prior to coming here um, on a particular night. So I would just encourage that to happen. Uh, first of all, second of all, when I, um, I don't, often think before I speak, but every once in a while I do. Um, but I, when, when I do that, I 
I look to see how people are going to perceive that, uh, but more importantly, how my actions are going to be perceived. And I look to see how somebody would see that negatively or attack it. I would strongly encourage you to watch tonight's meeting from John Q. Citizen that has no clue about county government that sat down tonight with a beer and a pizza and wanted to learn what county government's all about. And take a look at the video. And I think you could all agree to come to the conclusion that there's room for improvement. And please, I'm not chastising. I might sound like I'm scolding or whatever. That's not, the intent is to make us better. That's all I got. Thank you. Well, before we call for adjournment, is there anything else? Anybody else wants to come? There's Commissioner a Domus, you have two folks on Zoom that have their hands raised. At three, actually. Is it all right if I allow them to speak? All right. This... They have allowed that in the past. They allow um, comment oh, from yeah, Zoom participants. So is it the person in the upper left-hand corner that... Uh... You have three. Name. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Betsy. Mm -hmm. okay, whoever you are, you have three minutes to speak. I gave you three. Cindy, can you please announce them for oh, um, yes. Chairperson Domus? Sure. So, uh, first, I'm going to uh, let George Earhart speak. Oh, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Well, thank you for allowing me to speak, and uh, thank you, gentlemen, for everything you do there. I did have the uh, privilege of attending your swearing-in ceremony, and I uh, I enjoyed that. I do go back to one thing. I think it was Mr. Drick was addressing that Livingston County is in the good shape that it's in because its commissioners uh, are very dedicated to what they do. They do their due diligence, they do their homework, and they make good decisions on this on the behalf of the people. And I believe you guys do that. Um, I think there was a lot of talk and discussion tonight about the inflation payment resolution, this stipend. I mean, one thing out of this is clear is I think there needs to be a serious look at the salaries for those employees that are uh, that are slacking in their in their compensation packages that, that are not competitive. Um, that being said, I'd like to think that the prior board and half of you guys were there, did their due diligence on this. The gentleman that came up to the counter several times, he had specific numbers on cost of living allowances and percentages and everything that went into that thought process. And I think it's disingenuous to try and portray that as a $1.6 million pot of gold that's out there when it translates to a dollar an hour, you know, to the employee on the ground. I'm not a county employee. I am retired. I've been a blue collar worker my whole life. And a dollar an hour means a lot, gentlemen, at the end of a 40 hour work week, especially going into this winter, when you're talking about gas and groceries, making decisions, that's gonna affect people's lives. I mean, obviously the unions are out there. You spoke quite a bit about that. They're going to negotiate their contracts. It's gonna come into that. Whatever the outcome is on this, I think that you, I, I hope and pray that you have some faith in the prior board that they, they made this on, uh, decision on good information. I'm sure it all came to them uh, over a period of time, but to delay that or not pay that, it's taking away the, the weekly paycheck from the hardworking people that work for this county. And I just think that would be disingenuous when you have time over the course of this year to look at how you want to readjust salaries. Take the time to readjust the salaries. Don't take the dollar an hour out of these guys' paycheck right now. I just think it would be wrong. Anyway, I know you'll make the right decisions. I know I have faith in you. God bless you, and thank you for the time that you're doing, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Appreciate it. Alyssa? Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, thank you uh, to everyone on the board for doing uh, all that you did tonight. Um, I did hear Sheriff Murphy comment um, gruffly to, to the play out of this meeting. And I would like to counter that with, this was the first meeting with many new commissioners on board. I think you all did a brilliant job today. I was very impressed. Took a, it took a little bit longer, but I'd rather get there the right way. Um, secondly, regarding prayer being added, um, I don't know why a committee would have to address that when why couldn't you just say both and not spend the time and the money on um, negotiating this out, just say both 
and that way everybody's happy. Um, to the commissioners that's, that mentioned the constituents and how this impacts them, every dollar that gets put towards a salary somehow, some way comes out of the constituents' pockets. Many of us work for small businesses or are small business owners. We don't have the luxury to have the state hand us $1.6 million. Um, I believe it was Commissioner Domus, Deaton, and I believe it was Commissioner Drick that all referenced how this might impact us. It's the first time I've heard this in a long time come from so many. So thank you for that. And regarding the stipends, um, I heard, oh, well, the clerk has to take on nine more days of election. Um, I've been in the bean counting world for a long time, and I will tell you, if somebody told me I get nine more days to process my year end, I can, pro I can promise you I would be thrilled with that extension. Um, so I really would like to see when stipends happen, just a more better description as to what is being added to their plate um, so that the constituents have a better idea that, oh, it really genuinely is more work being put in front of them. So um, I think that's all I've got. Thank you so much. God bless each one of you. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Sherry LaRue. Hi, thanks. It's Sherry LaRue. I'm from Green Oak Township. And I think I'll end this evening with a prayer from Pastor Joe Wright, who prayed this prayer 26 years ago at the opening session of Kansas City or Kansas House of Representatives. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, woe to those who call evil good, but that's exactly what we've done. We've lost our spiritual equilibrium and inverted our values. We confess that we have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it moral pluralism. We have worshiped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We've endorsed perversion and called it alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have neglected the needy and called it self-preservation. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed our unborn and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building esteem. We have abused power and called it political savvy. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O oh God. Know our hearts today. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Commissioner Domus, that is all the hands raised in Zoom. Support. Yep. I was having support. <laughs> aye. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by raising the right hand or saying aye. 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 Right. Second. 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 Second.